this morning what's happened inside the house or how it really occurred. Um, our disaster victim identification squad are there, the fire and rescue, uh, urban search and rescue people are there at the moment. You know, we've got to look at sort of compromise, not, not compromising people by going into an unsafe building. So at the moment, the priority is just getting the building secured, making sure everything's in place, and then we can step in and start our forensic examinations as well. To uh, look, as I said, what's, what is readily apparent is just a, a tragedy on, on an on unimaginable scale at the moment. And, uh, really just trying to come to terms with what's actually happened. You've spoken to some of the family members that got out. What have they been able to, to tell you? Look, it's still, I haven't been able to be, I haven't been briefed on that yet, but they've only been able to provide a very, very brief picture. We haven't had the opportunity to sort of drill down and talk to them and find out exactly what happened. Understandably, you know, they're traumatised and, and, and beyond belief and they're still trying to come to terms with it as well too. But as time's progressing, it's just slow, slowly getting a picture, but at this stage, it's, uh, we still can't provide a really accurate description of what happened. Do you know how many people were inside and how many families? <coughs> At this stage, we, the, when the fire actually started, there were 13 people in the house, consisted predominantly of two families. As I said, two managed to get out, but unfortunately we've got 11 people unaccounted for, and um, you know, said we're still going through the rubble at the moment trying to locate these people. I'm told that there were a number of children inside the home. Yeah, we've got no idea yet of, of ages or, or you know, sex or anything else like that, but uh, at this stage, all, all I really can confirm, unfortunately, is that we've got 11 people there. And the men that escaped? Was it two men that escaped? Two men escaped, yes. Well, one has uh, suffered minor burn injury, uh, injury to the shoulder as well too. Has been treated and, is, and he's back at the scene at the moment now, just assisting us. How were they able to get out? Families, two families. Was there possibly a third member of the third family there? At this stage there's no indication of it. It's predominantly two families. There may have been one or two different you know, people from outside that family group in the house there. Can you actually walk? On the second story, the building, because the floorboards look like they've collapsed. Not me either. I'll leave it up to, to Peter to be able to explain where the seat of the fire is, but at this stage, it's that we can't really compromise people by putting them into an area that's unsafe. So the main focus is just make sure everything's safe so we can go in and our forensic people and do their job. Do we know if there were smoke alarms in the home? Sorry? Do we know if there were smoke alarms? No, I don't. Know. Have you Peter. Superintendent, how will that um, identification process go from now? Will Inside that building. Oh, inside, look, it is, <coughs> pardon me, it is a slow and very methodical process, but for the sake of reporting these deaths to the coroner, we have to be 100% sure. Um, in some instances, it may come down to um, you know, dental identification. You know, these are the people, some of the people that are here today were there in Bali, you know, the Bali bombing back in 2002. So they're experienced, they're, they've got a wealth of knowledge behind them, and as I said, it's a slow, methodical process. Uh, just ask the community to understand that um, we need to be 100% sure and it's no quick fix. It will be here for some time. Has anybody been recovered? No, not yet. Superintendent, have you seen this kind of tragedy in fire before during a period? No, no, never in my service. Never I've seen anything like this. It's, um, as I said, it, it's the, the longer it takes, the more, you know, as soon as we can get into the building, I think it's just what is readily evident is just a, it's a total and utter catastrophe. It's just a tragedy, but on all proportions. Is there any idea of what started the fire at this point? Can you tell us anything about the fire? No, we can't. Uh, the, the fire is still under investigation. We have investigators from Queensland Police and Queensland Fire and Rescue Service uh, investigating the cause. At this stage, it, um, it is still undetermined. But the men that made it out, did they say anything about what could have started the blaze? No, I, uh, I haven't um, interviewed those people. That's, um, we leave that to uh, the Queensland Police Service. Peter, when you look at that fire scene that's left there now, what does that tell you, when, you know, as a trained firefighter, when you look at that immediate scene, what do you see? I see a scene of, um, of tragedy. Uh, there's many lives that have been lost in this tragedy, and um, I ask myself, could it have been avoided? Um, it's undetermined whether or not smoke alarms were installed in the building. We have no evidence that they were or they weren't, so that's to be investigated. What are the, what are the intensity of the fire from what you can see? Firefighters are uh, arriving on scene within um, uh, five minutes of the initial call from our Woodridge fire station, which is in close proximity where we are at the moment. They were faced with a uh, total, um, total engulfment of the building in flame, which is what's inclusive of um, two vehicles parked external to the building and also uh, four 45 kilo LPG cylinders that were venting quite badly. So um, the, uh, the fire was, was very intense on, upon their arrival. And how do you describe it in, in your years of experience? 
I've, I haven't seen um, a, a tragedy uh, which is um, to this extent. I've, I've certainly um, seen um, a lot of fatalities in my time, both in uh, road crash rescue and, um, and house fires, uh, building fires, but, but not to this extent. When you look inside that building there, for people that obviously haven't seen a fire before, the aftermath, how would you describe the inside of that, that upstairs level? There's a, uh, it's, it's the whole building. We, we have our urban search and rescue unit um, uh, attending in the very near future to, um, uh, to assist the police in the recovery phase of, of those deceased and they will, um, they will shore the building after doing a risk assessment in relation to making the building safe for entry. Have you been able to get in there or is the house too unstable to go in? No, the, the internal part of the house, uh, the floor has collapsed and uh, there is a lot of debris um, uh, within the building. Superintendent, this is part of your community here. You're, you're yes. the officer who's been in touch with a lot of these community elements. How do you think this is going to be taken? The, the ramifications that we've seen this morning is um, just a, a huge outpouring of grief amongst, amongst the community here, just in this local area. Uh, the community spirit in the local area is none that I've ever seen anywhere else. It's, it's, um, it's very supportive, very close-knit in terms of diversity and the number of cultures living here, but this, the community spirit is phenomenal. But uh, I don't think it'll take some months for this to the community sort of come some stage to an even recovering from this. As I said, it's, uh, you know, the, the total number of people lost in one particular incident uh, have in regard to their family. Their families are obviously members of the community as well too. I think it'll take a long time for this to sort of even dissipate or even the hurt to go away and some sense of normality come back to us again. Superintendent, how long do you expect it will be before the body is removed from the house? Oh, look, I can't really say at this stage. It depends on um, how long it takes to shore the building up. I'd like to be able to give you an answer, but uh, they will definitely be out by today. And the coroner has been notified. The coroner has indicated that uh, he or she will be coming down here at some stage during the day and having a look. Um, but then that all forms part of our uh, the brief to put together for the coroner. Uh, the pathologist will obviously want to come along and have a look as well too. So a um, number of things in train that we need to just sort of sit back and wait. But as I said, it, it's it's a slow, methodical process, but these are things that need to be done and actually to paint an accurate picture of what happened. And typically, how long does it take to find a cause? Uh, well, usually it's something that it, it depends how apparent it is, but um, I think I'll leave that up to, to Peter's area of expertise. But, um, you know, as soon as it's determined, we'll be able to sort of work on what happened from there and then it's up to our disaster victim identification people to to work out the you know the movements of the people and how they all came to um, you know to perish. I understand there were some power lines that fell removed as well but I'm just thinking that's possibly any contributing factor that's true. No I'm, I'm unaware about anything about any power lines or anything so neighbours have said that the families from China, the two families yeah, although all I can confirm is that we believe they're from Pacific Island uh, nationality. I don't know exactly what, what runs. How but much assistance have the two men been? <clears throat> They've been in quite beneficial in terms of the last movements of actually what happened. But, uh, you know, obviously they're not going to be too much of assistance in terms of how the, how the fire started, where it started. They'll just be able to sort of give us those last terrifying moments and just hopefully help us put the piece, you know, put all the pieces together and this is it, what's emerged there is just a big jigsaw puzzle and all the pieces are just going to be put together but it's going to be a slow process and then that's just the, this part as I said, community healing is going to be the one that we're really going to have to work on and we're really going to have to ask people to help support each other. Is that, have both been told much about how they got out or what conditions they had to go through to get out? No, not at this stage, it's just they both managed to get out and it would appear that they're very fortunate to get out as well too. So. You know, we just have to wait and see, guys. Oh, so it's three generations of the same family. In, in one to how many? Uh, three generations of one family. In one family. Yeah, I, I don't know about how many generations in there, what the specific makeup of uh, you know ages or anything were, but these are things that will come out. You know, the more we talk to the people who survived, the more we find out from the recover from the scene. You know, we'll be able to do paint a, a more accurate picture. Are the two men from the same family? That I've got no idea. No, I can't help you. Got for them or? Of the men or the people the, the in the men. house? The men. Uh, now I just I don't have that information. In the twenties, thirties. Yeah, I'd be there both you know, in their forties or the forties to fifties. Peter, are you surprised anyone was able to get out? I, I find that question very difficult to answer. Um, 
the benefit of having working smoke alarms, of course, is early notification. Um, I mentioned before that it's yet to be determined whether or not smoke alarms uh, were um, activated within the building or installed. And Peter, typically an investigation on, on the cause, how long do you think that's going to take? Uh, I can't give you a clear indication on that. It depends on the um, investigators, what, uh, what information, what evidence they need to gather um, in relation to um, uh, formulating their report.